What is up there YouTube? This is a J Man Time and today I have a video on two rare experimental Polish tanks that were developed in the mid to late 1920s. And these two vehicles here are very mysterious as there's not much information out there and most of the information on these two vehicles actually comes from now Polish sources mostly from the Czech Republic and Sweden. And these two vehicles were known as the WB-3 and WB-10 tanks, which were two experimental medium wheeled come amphibious tanks, depending on the sources, that were developed between 1925 and 1928. These two tanks are very rare, and there are very few photographs of these vehicles. There's very little information on these vehicles, as most of these two tanks were developed in a time period where Poland really didn't put most of their information out there, and most of the surviving secret information was either confiscated or destroyed by the Germans during the occupation of Poland between September 1939 and 1945. The WB-3 and WB-10 were two separate experimental medium tanks that were designed by a man named Dr. Ludwig Ibermann, who was a diesel engine specialist from the Lviv Polytechnics University in the city of Lviv, known back then as Lvov, which was part of Poland back then, but was later given to Ukraine in the post-World War II era. Dr. Ibermann, along with several other professors from the same university, were tasked with coming up with one or more experimental vehicles for the Polish army. After the Polish-Soviet War of 1921, the Polish military was looking for a new tank to replace the old FT-17 Renault, which was the standard tank in the Polish army during the 1920s until the introduction of the TKS tanket and later on the 70P series of light tanks. Ibermann, along with several other members of this Polytechnic University came up with two experimental wheeled come tanks. Now here's where the information gets pretty iffy. According to some sources, both of these vehicles were wheeled come amphibious tanks, whereas some sources state that only one vehicle was a wheeled come tank and the other vehicle was a fully tracked amphibious medium tank. Now the wheeled come the tank or tanks were tanks that had the ability to either retract their wheels in order to run on tracks or they could either retract or remove their tracks and run on wheels. Now wheel come tanks were being developed in the US and the Soviet Union and Great Britain at the same time along with France also. So this wasn't a new concept. In fact, several other countries and several smaller nations were also developing wheel come tanks like Czechoslovakia and Sweden. Now, it is believed that the wheel come idea actually came from either Sweden or neighboring Czechoslovakia, who were also developing wheel come tanks too. But keep in mind, Poland did purchase some experimental French tanks, including one wheel come tank it. So the wheel come design could have come from one of these three nations. Ultimately, two experimental prototype tanks were constructed between 1925 and 1927, and both of these tanks were tested in 1928 against three other unknown experimental tanks developed by three other inventors or Polish armament firms. The two tanks were actually constructed by the Warsaw Locomotive Factory or manufacturing plant, the same plant that would produce trains for both the Polish army and the Polish civilian population. So this uh, train factory or locomotive factory actually constructed the hull while the engine and most of the internal components were constructed by the Lviv or Lvov Polytechnics University. According to some sources, the main armament of this vehicle, the main armament of one of these vehicles was a 37mm L21 main gun. The L21 was a Polish modification of the old French SA-18 main gun, which was the same gun seen on the Renault FT-17, except the Polish version was much longer and had better armor penetration. And then the second prototype was fitted with one 47mm Armata WZ-25, which was an experimental Polish
Polish anti-tank and field artillery piece. This was a new Polish anti-tank and field artillery gun that was developed in the same year of 1925. And this experimental gun had an armor penetration of 30 to 40 millimeters at 500 to 800 yards. The secondary armament of one or both of these vehicles was either one 7 millimeter Hotchkiss machine gun or one 13.2 millimeter experimental auto cannon as the auto cannon model was never mentioned. The only auto cannon that was used by the Polish army was the Hotchkiss model 1929 and that gun didn't come out until a year after this tank was tested in 1928. So I don't know the actual model of this 13.2 millimeter auto cannon. Some sources also state that these tanks might have had radios built into them. And if so, they would have been some of the more advanced tanks as the radios and tanks in the 1920s were pretty rare. The armor thickness of one vehicle was 8 to 12 millimeters, while one of the other vehicles had an armor thickness of 8 to 35 millimeters. The speed of both of these vehicles was 25 kilometers per hour or 15.5 miles per hour, and they had a crew of between 4 and 7 depending on the sources. And like I said, most of the sources are not from Poland, they're actually from the Czech Republic and Sweden, who are the only two nations that still have information on these two experimental tanks. Now the tanks actually performed pretty badly. One of the tanks wheel cum system was not designed properly and the tank could not move at all and was pretty much kicked out of the contest. And the other tank was seen as too slow. This was a tank that had a speed of 15.5 miles per hour. Poland was looking for a tank that could do a speed of at least 20 to 25 miles per hour. So these two tank prototypes pretty much failed the test. They did have good armor and armament for the time. They just didn't have the speed and their wheeled cum track system was simply too complicated for Poland at this time. As a result, Poland would later go on to test the other three experimental tanks. These are the unknown tanks developed by three unnamed individuals. And those three tanks would also fail. So later on in 1929, Poland would go on to purchase the British Carden Lloyd tanket and the British Vickers Mark E light tanks and would reverse engineer them into the TKS tanket and the Polish 7TP light tanks light tank series. So these two tanks pretty much failed. It seems as if these two vehicles were used as training vehicles. Later on, these vehicles were given to the 3rd Tank Battalion based in the city of Warsaw. This was a new tank division at the time and it was set up in 1935. And most of the photographs of these two tanks comes from this one tank division, the 3rd Armored Battalion or 3rd Tank Battalion. Now, later on in September 1939, Germany would invade Poland, and later on, on September the 17th, 1939, the Soviet Union would also invade Poland. And during the siege of Warsaw, the German forces would later capture these two tanks at one of the bases used by the 3rd Armored Division. Now, which base it was captured at is largely unknown because the 3rd Armored Division had four checkpoints or four defensive areas. But there were three major areas that they were involved in. And these were Fort Wula, Fortress Maudlin, and Fort Mayamont. And these were three fortresses that existed in and around the city of Warsaw. I've been looking through German occupation photographs of these areas to see if I could find some better photos of these two experimental tanks. But unfortunately, I've only been able to find a photograph of the original mock-up of what looks like the WB-3 version of the tank. And that's pretty much it. After the Germans captured these vehicles in 1939, their fates are largely unknown. They might have been sold for scrap or scrapped for metal, or they could have been dumped somewhere. Now, in Poland, they have been tanks and vehicles found in the various rivers and swamps in Poland. And these were tanks that were largely dumped by the Germans or by the Soviets, either during the war or after World War II. So it, these tanks could exist out there somewhere, but most likely they were probably melted down by the Germans, as many of the other experimental Polish tanks were later, were later shipped to Germany, where they were stripped down and sold for scrap metal. Now the real question is, how effective would these tanks have been if all of the kinks were worked out and these vehicles had entered service with the Polish army? 
The 47mm gun on the second prototype, the WB-10, had an armor penetration of 30 to 40 millimeters, so it would have been able to take out the early model Panzer II, III, and IV tanks being used by the Germans. Now, the first tank, the WB-3, with its 37mm gun, its unnamed 37mm gun, most likely the L-21, wouldn't have feared all that will against the German army. The armor thickness of the second vehicle being up to 35mm would have been good too. The only problem with both vehicles were the speed, only 15.5 miles per hour. There's also some other sources that state that one of these vehicles was an electric powered vehicle. It was a diesel electric vehicle instead of just a standard diesel tank. And then there's another source that states that these vehicles might have been completely electrically driven or electrically powered. If that's the case, these would have been the first tanks to be powered solely by batteries, or at least some of the first tanks to be powered solely by electricity. So almost like a hybrid tank, just like we have hybrid cars or hybrid electric cars nowadays. And that's basically it. This is all the information I could find on the WB-3 and WB-10 experimental tanks from 1925-1928. So what do you think of these two experimental tanks? I've been trying to find more photographs of them, but I can't find any more photographs than what I have. I'm also still looking for those other three experimental tanks that were unnamed. But for now, I still haven't found them. So I guess for now, that's it when it comes to these two experimental tanks and some of the early Polish tanks altogether. So what do you all think of these two experimental tanks? Please tell me in the comments section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time, signing off.